Hey guys, and welcome to Jay's Nest. I'm Jacqueline, and I'm a dreamer. <laughs> and I'm dreaming of a really big garden this year. I don't know anything about gardening. In fact, these past two years I've tried growing stuff. I'll show you. Rest in peace. watermelons have just died off. We have little bunnies and squirrels, rabbits that eat them all. So this year I'm going to attempt a very big garden because I'm a dreamer. And honestly I probably shouldn't go this big but I'm going to be unapologetic about my dreaming and I'm just gonna go for it. So we just moved into a house. This house was recently foreclosed. My stepson's mom decided to rent this house out to us and it's in shambles a little bit. I'm gonna show you what my backyard looks like now and hopefully in a few months it's going to look like a beautiful oasis that I've been dreaming about for months. I don't have a very big backyard but it is bigger than the backyard I previously had. Now there are things all over the place those things are from my stepson's stepdad. He does construction work and that's some of his stuff that he's had around. But let's show you the other part of the garden as well. And this is the part that's really messy. So needless to say, there's a lot of cleaning up to do. As far as the garden this year, this whole area over here, I wanna make my herb garden. Now I will show you guys my seeds and what I plan to plant this year. This gardening content is going to be a lot different than what I normally put on my channel. I mainly talk about cloth diapers, but for me, cloth diapering has led me to a lifestyle of sustainability and learning to care about the earth. And this year, I really wanna get in touch with nature. Um, I really wanna get back to my roots and I really wanna silence myself and listen to the wisdom that earth has to teach me. I feel led by my heart to garden, whether I kill off my plants or not, but I believe something beautiful will come from this. A large part of myself also wants to garden to help take off the burden of being able to afford food for my family. We have a very big family. We have a blended family, so some are my husband, some are mine, and some are children we've had together. We are a one-income family. I make maybe about $60 a month from YouTube, but I don't get paid until I hit the $100 threshold, so about every two months I make about $120 from YouTube. I've talked about that a few times on my channel before. Um, it's nothing magnificent. I am very blessed to be able to make money from YouTube at all, but it's nothing to really live off of. <laughs> but I'm hoping that gardening will help alleviate some of that pressure to feed my family off of my husband's one income. And there are many other reasons why I want to garden as well. Like just being sustainable and knowing where my food is sourced and how it's sourced and how it's grown. I have never eaten anything from a homegrown garden before. Last year I grew some watermelon. I knew nothing about watermelons or how to grow them or how they worked. And they got powdery mildew. They were infested by a bunch of bugs. Um, I tried planting like 20 plants and a two by five foot area. <laughs> and watermelons, they like their space. So this year I will be growing watermelon, but now I know a little more about watermelons and all the space that they like. This yard is probably about four times the size of my old yard. Hi, sweetie. I'm hoping my microphone isn't getting choked out by the wind. That's my little scarlet. I need to get one of those uh, fuzzy things to go on my mic so it's not when the wind goes by. While I'm not exactly a first-time gardener, I am a first-time gardener because the two previous years in 2017 and 2018, I thought you could just put a seed in the ground and then it grows. I also thought that plants grew all season and I just didn't realize that some plants grow well in the spring, some do well in the fall, some do well in the summer. I didn't realize that plants had personalities. And honestly, I think that's beautiful and it totally makes sense that plants have personalities. So I'm excited to work with all of these different personalities as I begin gardening.
And as much as I want to say that it's my garden and they're my plants, I can't control them. I'm working with nature and nature is going to tell me what it needs and what it likes. And working together, we're going to create some beautiful fruit and some beautiful flowers. I plan to spend most of my days out here in the garden. Truth is, I've gone through many years of depression and I've really isolated myself in my house. And this year, I want to spend more time outside and I feel like creating a beautiful oasis in my backyard, something that's beautiful but also edible, will help me get out of the house and just help me ground myself into nature. So I'm going to show you a few of the seeds that I plan to grow this year. And since I'm a visual person, I'll also put pictures of these things on the screen as well. And as ugly as that part of my yard looks, I want to keep looking at it because soon it's going to be something way more beautiful. And look at my tree. Hi tree, I love that tree. I'm going to need to name her. So first, definitely going to grow some chamomile. I'm probably most excited about lavender. This is probably one of the herbs I'm most excited to grow. Oh, I also have a baby here on my back. <laughs> She's almost always back there. So I'm going to have a lot of healing herbs in my garden this year. My son picked these out. They're the Pansy Winter Flowering Himalis Mixed and they look like little faces. He is six and we just got a kick out of those faces and we're really excited to grow those. Next I have chia seeds and I love chia seeds. I didn't realize you could grow chia seeds and I put them on everything. I sprinkle them in smoothies and pretty much on most of my meals and this came with 500 seeds. I don't think I'll ever run out of chia seeds. Next I have chrysanthemums. I heard that this is definitely one to have in your garden. This is the edible, the shungaku edible flower. I also have borage. I got all of my seeds from In My Gardener and also Baker's Creek. Oh, so good. I have this Dixie Queen watermelon. I also have this Green Flesh Honeydew Melon. When I was a kid, I used to eat so many of these, and so this is just gonna bring me back to my childhood. Also growing some sage. And then some hot jalapeno peppers. And this one is a maybe. If we have enough room, we'll definitely be growing these. I like jalapenos on lots of things, especially things like salsa. If I can't find any room, then this is probably going to be cut off of my list. I'm really excited to grow these. Aunt Molly's ground cherries. I've heard mixed reviews about these, so we'll see. But I'm really excited about these. I was watching a few videos and some people say they taste like pineapples and mangoes mixed together. And then I have this Salvia Sirius Blue Sage. This is gorgeous. I don't remember if this has medicinal uses, but I definitely got this because of how pretty it looked. So I have cumin, and I love tacos, and this makes for a great seasoning for tacos. I have some Wisconsin pickling cucumbers. I actually don't really like cucumbers, but I do like pickles. I only like sweet pickles. I grew up on sweet pickles, and I didn't know there was anything outside of a sweet pickle until I got older. I was very disappointed. I have these white bush scallop summer squash. They're also known as patty pan squashes. I've never had squash before, so I'm excited to try these out. I heard squashes in general are prolific. I have another squash in here somewhere. I also have some wild bergamot bee balm. This year I'm really caring for the butterflies and the bees. You know, the monarch butterfly is almost extinct and I actually have my milkweed, milkweed seeds in the refrigerator right now because I'll be planting those soon. Um, the monarch butterfly, they live solely off of the milkweed plant and they're going extinct. The eastern monarch butterfly, their population has gone down by I think 93% and that is crazy. So we might see them go extinct in our time and I'm going to try to do what I can to help out their species. So I do have some milkweed in the fridge. But I have this bee balm, I heard bees go crazy over this and I definitely want some bees in my yard this year to help pollinate. I have sugar snap peas. Love, love, love some sugar snap peas. I'll probably go quite a few of those plants. 
I have the purple cone flower, also known as echinacea. These are beautiful, and I know bees love that. I also heard that echinaceas, I think after growing them for a few years, that their roots can be used medicinally. I also have some thyme. I accidentally ordered two of these, so now I have like way too much thyme, and each pack comes with 300 seeds, so now I have 600 thyme seeds. Don't know how I will use that. The wind here is getting crazy. I have tons of sunflower seeds this year. I love sunflowers. This is the Autumn Beauty sunflower. The one thing my husband requested this year was the Pantano Romanesco tomato. I've heard no reviews about this, but I had him go on Baker's Creek and pick out whatever tomato he wanted. He said this year he only wanted a tomato. You what? Uh, I think she's out front. Tried looking up some videos and reviews and there really wasn't much to say about this specific tomato, so hopefully it turns out well. Next I have some rosemary. I have these Blahild beans. I got these because they're purple, and purple is one of my favorite colors. They're beautiful. Um, yeah, they're a pole bean. Excited to grow these. I have the Tommy Toe tomato. These are micro tomatoes. They're really tiny. Truth is, I don't even like tomatoes, but I've only ever had store-bought tomatoes, so I'm trying a few different varieties of tomatoes this year to see if it'll change my opinion. I figured these micro tomatoes would be perfect in a salad. And then I have a Waltham Butternut Winter Squash. Again, I've never tried squashes before, but I heard they taste like sweet potatoes, and I love sweet potatoes, so if these do taste like sweet potatoes, then I'm going to love these. I'm just nervous about all the bugs that come with this, squash bugs and... Hopefully my garden doesn't get infested. I also have this Snow Princess Calendula. I've heard amazing things about Calendula. It's used in a lot of things, especially like cloth diaper ointments. My daughter picked out this one. This is her plant, and we're gonna be planting tons of these around the yard. Next I have this Velvet Queen Sunflower. It's this beautiful burgundy color. Gorgeous, I'm obsessed with sunflowers. I have the Cracker Jack Marigold. I have a Royal Burgundy bean bush. These are, again, purple beans. I love green beans, and the fact that there are purple green beans <laughs> is amazing to me. Excited to try those. And then, I have a tender sweet orange watermelon. I didn't know there were watermelons outside of like the pink red flesh. There are orange flesh, white flesh, yellow flesh, so over the years I'm going to be growing them all. I'm obsessed with watermelon. I'm pretty much a watermelon addict. If you follow my channel or if you know me personally, you absolutely know that I'm obsessed with watermelon. I'm excited to give this one a try. I've, I've read some reviews that it kind of has a tropical undertone to it, and that's very exciting to me because I love fruit. I also have some oregano. I have some Sunspot Dwarf Sunflower. So these ones will get about two feet tall. The other sunflowers will get anywhere from six foot to 10 foot, maybe 12 foot tall. They're really massive, but these are only two feet tall. These are gonna be perfect for the kids. All right, and then I have some small packets that I got online from some people. I have the Cosmic Purple Carrot. Love carrots, and the fact that there's a purple carrot just fascinates me. I have the Chinese Noodle Bean. These are gorgeous. These are like a red color and they're climbers and they can hang off a trellis. I'll definitely be trellising those. And they're long, they're like two feet long. Beautiful. These seeds right here are lufagourds. I really hope this will work out this year. I like the idea of a natural sponge. We go through sponges like crazy here. I'm very picky with my sponges and they start to smell and get nasty. But the fact that there's a natural sponge really fascinates me. So I'm hoping we're able to grow lots of lufagourds this year. This is a tomato I'm most excited about is the Black Beauty tomato. I just think the color is gorgeous. Really, I'm going for anything that's purple. I, I keep finding myself going towards vegetables and fruits that are purple. And the Black Beauty tomato is almost black. It's just so dark. There's so much anthocyanin in it that it turns it like this blackish color. And that's it. 
that's everything that I'll be growing this year. Um, it's a lot of stuff. Oh, I also have the Sun Gold Tomato. I saw someone post on the Roots and Friends of Roots and Refuge Farm on Facebook, that group. If you're not part of that group, definitely go join it. Roots and Refuge Farm here on YouTube has a beautiful channel. She's definitely given me some inspiration and love to really fire up my passion for a garden this year. I was doing research on gardening and I came across her channel and she just made me fall even more in love with gardening this year. Her channel is really right on track with all the love and passion that I'll be pouring into my garden this year. But um, she has a Facebook group and someone was asking what the best tomato was because she didn't like tomatoes and I don't either and so I was going through her thread and almost everybody said sun gold tomatoes it's a cherry tomato but everybody says they're sweet like candy so I have that coming on the way so I'll be growing that as well I'm hoping it's really good I heard some people say they just crack too much and they're not as good as everyone says they are so we'll see but I'm excited to grow the sun gold cherry this year as well I think the people who used to live here used to garden because I think there's onions all over my yard which is exciting for me because I wanted to grow onions this year but I didn't get anything to grow them. I'll show you. So these patches, these green patches right here, just sticking up, they're all over the place. They're there, there. You see them? I was wondering that the other day if they were onions and I just pulled one up. Oh yeah, that smells like an onion. That smells delicious. Mmm. I like onions, or maybe it's a leek. I don't think I've ever had a leek. You guys tell me down below, are these onions? They're all over my yard right now. If they are onions, then I'm going to keep some of them and just let them grow. Got one there, and some over there. Got a bunch over here. It's amazing. I look forward to documenting this whole journey with gardening this year. Look at all this junk. If you guys have any advice on gardening or any of the varieties that I'm growing this year, please leave your advice down below. I've been doing a lot of research, but I'm also a newbie, so I I expect to fail at some things this year, but I'm I'm okay with that. I think that's part of the learning experience with gardening. You mess up, you learn from it. But all right guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time.